everyone. It's George Curls with another episode of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And I appreciate you joining me today and taking some time to listen to what I have to share. And I appreciate uh, more and more of you have been reaching out and telling me you're listening to podcasts. I always feel like I'm just kind of talking in a room by myself, which is what I'm doing. But hopefully you're finding some value. I try to mix it up, sharing some uh, ideas, some personal stories, some ideas to improve education. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today is an old blog post that I shared talking about how we can use stories to drive innovation and thinking about all the different ways that we can use stories to really fuel the work that we do. And I'm a big believer. I always say this is that stories are the fuel for innovation. They're what inspire us. They are, um, you know, the, they give us really pertinent ideas, but they also get our, the work that we're doing out to people in a really compelling way that goes beyond what a score uh, can tell people uh, about our students. And like one of the things that you often hear is like, how do we share information with our public um, to go beyond the scores? And I I think stories are the best way. And what I find fascinating is when I talk about the idea of sharing stories to fuel innovation, Stories are probably the most traditional teaching practice we've used uh, in our lifetimes. It's probably the oldest teaching practice that there is. And I think it's really powerful to think of it this way. And one of my favorite quotes, because people think that, you know, tradition and innovation are actually polar opposites, but I think they can actually be connected. And I've joked about tradition. One of my favorite quotes, this is not mine is tradition is peer pressure from dead people, right? (laughs) Which I think is a hilarious thing. But when you look at tradition, I don't think it's a bad term. Uh, But I think sometimes we do things just because we've always done them, not because they're beneficial to the people we serve right now. And we have to always kind of like ask that, you know, like, are we just doing this because? And so, as I mentioned, stories are an extremely traditional practice. And I think they... um, they have this connection to really um, connect that, that human connection. I've, and I've said this before. Um, if you want to inspire meaningful change, you have to make a connection to the hearts before you make a connection to the mind. And stories are the way to actually do that. And before I kind of share some strategies with you, I actually want to share my own story. Um, and it's actually uh, an idea we got uh, from a school district. I think it was in Atlanta at the time. And what they were doing was they were basically capturing stories of what was happening in the schools in a daily process. And I can't remember the exact title, but we, and we credited this group in Atlanta, and this is probably like 10 years ago, we started this. Um, We started an idea, or we started this process called 184 Days of Learning in my last school district. And And all it was was asking people like, what did you learn today, right? Very simple question. What did you learn today? Now, the answer could be something in school, it could be outside of school, and it could be by any of our stakeholders. It could be a parent, it could be a student, a teacher, superintendent, support staff, um, you know, like a custodian, bus driver, uh, office staff. Just a, a great way to like share the things that are happening uh, in our schools. And when we first did it, I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, people are a little apprehensive about it, putting ideas out there, you know, uh, people are nervous to be like the first person to go and to share these things. And there was a turning point. And the turning point was, um, there was a student in grade four, and her name was Madison. And Madison wanted to share about one of her stories that really impacted her, one of the things that she learned that had incredible impact. And it was about a book called The Dot by Peter Reynolds. And Peter had uh, written this book and Madison in grade four had really resonated with it. And she, she actually um, shared, you know, why it made an impact on her. And she drew some artwork uh, to go along with what she had shared. And what's neat about it is that we posted this and within a few hours, Peter Reynolds, the author of the book actually wrote a comment to Madison. Right. And the whole class was so excited and this this story spread like wildfire like everyone in our school district because now they saw that this could be something really powerful that not only does your voice matter 
it can reach anyone in the world. It's a really powerful thing to teach, you know, our, our kids. And once we started sharing that story and I had shared it not only in our school district, but outside people started saying like, Hey, that's a great idea. Like we're going to try this. And more people were drawn to this, this idea, to this blog. And we saw people popping up versions of this uh, all over the world. And I think that not only having that opportunity to share our voices, but telling that story over and over again, kind of really brought, you know, people to, to this space and we're more open to doing this and just seeing how powerful that was to see, you know, through the eyes of a student. And a lot of times when we're trying some new things that are, you know, I don't, I don't want to say controversial, but are different from maybe what, you know, parents have experienced in schools. And I, and I, and I have a big belief on this is that the idea that we often hear is like, you know, parents are, you know, they, they just want school the way it was. I, I totally disagree with that. Parents want what's best for their children. But if they only know what their experience is, they probably by default assume it's the best, right? Like I've turned out okay, so why does my kid need anything different, right? But when we create these experiences and we share these stories, what the hope is, is that when they start to spread, parents start to say like, that is so much better than anything I as a kid. This is what I want for my own children. And really, there is power in this. And so I, I just want to share a couple of things. And I think it's, you know, telling stories is one thing. And I think it's a very traditional practice, but it's also something we could modernize and tap into. And so I'm going to share these four strategies. And uh, I've listed some examples uh, in the post as well. But I'll just kind of talk to you about them right now. And like, obviously, sharing podcasts like this is a great way to, to share stories, uh, to connect. And uh, I see actually a lot of schools, uh, you know, having student podcasts and they're connecting with educators, having students ask questions. I've, I have the opportunity to be on a, a couple of myself and I'll tell you, like, I love doing, you know, being interviewed for podcasts. One of my favorite things is when it's students actually leading conversations in what we're doing. Um, so I just want to share these, these four ideas. And the first one is, really tapping into the power of visuals. We have this opportunity to spread, right? And a story can be told through a meme. A story can be told through a TikTok video. A story can be told through um, like a longer YouTube video. And I think that it has the power in these spaces to go beyond, uh, you know, our, our immediate spaces. Like, there's a real amazing opportunity we have when we're sitting with a group of people and we can see their faces and their expressions. But there's also an opportunity when we share these visuals because of this connection. And I've said this before is that if you think a picture is worth a thousand words, what do you think a video is worth? And, and really kind of sharing some of the highlights and the things that we you know, have going on in our schools. And I remember specifically when we actually shifted um, in, in the school that I was leading as a principal, we shifted the principal pictures um, that were at the front of the entrance and we put them to active student um, visuals of like kids currently in our classroom that were playing, were doing some really compelling learning and just actually had a visual. Those simple pictures told a story when you walked in, like what is the school about? What's important here? And I think that is something that, um, was really powerful in what we do. So really thinking about those visuals and it kind of leads into the next one is, you know, capturing like a year in photos and videos. Um, there is an app called one second every day. And it's, it's pretty amazing to see is that um, there is a Ted talk on this. And I think the person who did the Ted talk actually created the app and it was someone who captured like one second of what their day looked like for I think actually several years. And what I saw some schools do is have like a one second every day of their school year. And thinking about, you know, in a time where we're dealing with COVID, uh, kids in different spaces, hybrid, remote, face-to-face, -face, whatever, what would that one second every day tell about your school? And how can you share this? And like, those single images tell something really powerful when you first start to talk about them, when you first start to share them, but when they are compiled, <laughs> excuse me, when they're compiled over time, um, there's something really amazing to share when we connect 
those ideas to see the progression and the growth to see how things have changed right like thinking about last year in you know 20 the 2019 2020 school year uh, how significantly different the beginning of the school year look to you know march of 2020 and what that story looked like and it could tell something really powerful and obviously when you add like audio and things like this but there's there's different ways and i've seen people you know for example do like a picture a day on instagram of their school experience so just something to consider uh the next idea that i want to share is um, really capturing stories through the voices of your students through digital portfolios and this is something I've been advocating for for years. And I think it's really important that if we're gonna do this effectively, that educators go first, as opposed to, um, you know, just kind of pushing that on our students, really kind of seeing the power of this. And really, when I get to look at my own digital portfolio to see kind of my progression, to see uh, conversations, I feel um, really, at, when I first started writing, I was more probably in your face and like, if you don't do this, you're irrelevant type writing, right? Which is great for getting the people who already agree with you to cheer you on. Not necessarily great for bringing people alongside. And I think that the digital portfolio for me actually shares like a story of my progression, a story of my growth, but it's not only um, limited to my learning, right? I've, I've shared, um, you know, when my, my father passed away, I shared that in my digital portfolio, which is a blog I, I've shared, you know, when I lost my dog, Kobe, when I lost my dog, Shaq. And when we share these stories, when we have an opportunity to consistently share in these spaces, not only what our learning is, but who we are as people, you, you, people start to see a different and they start to see this. And I think that when we have students sharing, you know, in their portfolios, you get to see their progression, you get to see their growth over time. And I think it's something that's really powerful because it's great when we have that opportunity to you know go in and take pictures and capture these videos and get our you know maybe communications department if you're so lucky to have one you know capturing moments but i think it's much more powerful when we actually capture the stories through our students eyes and capture you know kind of what our students are seeing and how they connect and it gives them an opportunity to share the learning. I think one of the powers of digital portfolios is they're never actually limited to like a year or a class. There's something you can do that you can watch, you know, students develop over time. And it tells a much more powerful story than grades could ever tell. I've always said this, grades do not tell the story of a child. So what are we offering as an alternative? I think digital portfolios can do something really powerful. And so the last one is really just the simplicity and the power of a hashtag. Uh, one of the schools I was just working with recently, um, we talked about, I asked them what was their hashtag and the superintendent had no clue. And I think it's because they had no clue because they didn't have one. So we actually created one together. And what the superintendent is doing is actually encouraging um, their staff to, to actually capture, uh, you know, share like a tweet a week of something they're doing in the classroom, right? Of their staff. And so like one tweet a week for me, that's, you know, or one post on Instagram to a hashtag doesn't take a lot of time. But if you times that by like 100 people in your organization or 500,000, there's so many great stories that can be captured in these spaces. And what's beautiful about this is that it's not just, you know, highlighting from the superintendent's eyes uh, what's happening or from a communications department. It's actually bringing people together and showing these really powerful stories of what's happening in our classrooms through, you know, what our educators are doing. And so when we think about stories, I think it's not just limited to like, you know, verbalizing and, and telling stories, but there's all these ways we can share stories through visuals, through mediums, through social media that we have access to now that can really not only spread the message of what we're doing, but can bring people together and bring your community together behind these ideas, as I shared, you know, in the 184 days of learning example of how, you know, sometimes when we see um, some of those stories of success, more people get excited and more tap in. So uh, I, I think that we have to really see that, you know, with technology that we have access to, it's really powerful 
but if you don't use it to humanize your organization, if you don't need, use it to humanize uh, your school, your classroom, uh, we're missing a huge opportunity. And I think through those stories, we can bring a real human element in so many different ways that honestly, we didn't have access, access to when we have kids. And it only matters, you know, we have access to it, but it only matters if you tap into it. So I'd love to hear your stories. I'd love to see all the incredible things that you're sharing. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.